This video is covering the skin, the largest organ in the body, and it has a number of functions. And it's important that you can go over or know in detail the structure of the skin, and this will help you discuss each of those important functions. The skin is made up of two layers. The outermost layer is known as the epidermis, then inside this is the dermis. The epidermis is the outermost layer and it itself is divided into three layers. So let's start from the inside out. We'll begin with the Malpighian layer, the innermost layer of the epidermis. The Malpighian layer is the innermost layer of the epidermis. You can see it in the picture here. It's this dark pink line that undulates, so it goes up and down. So it's not a flat line of cells, it's a undulating. And it wraps around the hair shaft. And when you look closely at the Malpighian layer, you can see that it's a single layer of cells that sits on this basement membrane. These cells are special stem cells that can undergo mitosis to produce skin cells called keratinocytes. You can also see that there's another type of cell here. It's called a melanocyte and it produces melanin. Melanin is responsible for giving our hair and our skin colour, but it plays a much more important role. It protects our skin from the damaging effect of UV radiation. So melanin is our natural sunscreen. So we can link the Malpighian layer with mitosis and also the production of melanin by those melanocytes. The middle layer of the epidermis is known as the granular layer and it's just above that Malpighian layer. So we now know that the new skin cells are produced by those stem cells in the Malpighian layer and they themselves can undergo mitosis to form new skin cells, new keratinocytes. And as they move up through the granular layer, these keratinocytes become filled with keratin, that hard protein. Eventually these cells will get pushed up to form the cornified layer. By that stage they are hardened, mostly consisting of keratin. They They've lost their cytoplasm and their nucleus, so the cornified layer is basically many layers of dead, flattened skin cells. So we've learned that the outermost layer of the skin is called the epidermis and this itself is further subdivided into three layers. The outer layer is the cornified layer, it's basically flattened dead skin cells. The middle layer is the granular layer and this is where the skin cells become filled with keratin, basically that hard protein. And then the innermost layer is known as the Malpighian layer. And it's there that mitosis takes place to produce new skin cells and where melanin is produced by those special melanocytes. Another important role associated with the epidermis is the production of vitamin D. Vitamin D is produced in the epidermis by the action of sunlight acting on molecules that are found in the epidermis. So vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin. It's important for absorbing calcium out of the gut. And if you're deficient in vitamin D, as a child you can get rickets and as an adult you can get osteomalacia. Below the epidermis is the second layer of the skin, the dermis. It's here that you find the blood vessels and they're responsible for providing all the nourishment, all the oxygen and nutrients to the skin. You also find the hair follicle and the sebaceous gland, which produces an oil called sebum. Sebum is responsible for keeping the skin subtle and moist and maintaining it as a physical intact barrier. It's here in the dermis that you also find very important receptors. They detect pressure, pain and temperature. You also find the sweat gland that is responsible for producing sweat and that's carried to the surface of the skin through a sweat duct. Beneath the dermis is a layer that consists of adipose tissue. This is basically fat and it's important that you know this and can identify it in a diagram. The skin plays a very important role in thermoregulation. That's maintaining body temperature at approximately 37 degrees Celsius. So what exactly does the skin do to help with thermoregulation? So what happens if you're too hot? Well, firstly, this excess heat is detected by a part of your brain known as the hypothalamus. And the first thing that can happen is vasodilation. This is where the blood vessels, those arterioles in the dermis of the skin, widen, allowing more blood to flow into those capillary beds near the surface of the skin. And in this way, lots of blood flows in and heat is lost from the surface of the skin. And this is why when you're hot, you're sort of red, your skin is sort of flushed. Also, when we're too hot we produce sweat so sweat is produced by the sweat glands and it travels up through those sweat ducts to the skin where it evaporates having a cooling effect. What happens when you're too cold? Well this is detected again by the hypothalamus and this time vasoconstriction takes place. This is when those arterioles, those blood vessels in the dermis of the skin narrow and they prevent lots of blood entering into those capillary beds near the surface of the skin and so prevent heat loss and this is why you look pale when you're cold. 
When you're cold, goosebumps form on the surface of your skin. This is called piloerection. It's when the erector muscle connected to the hair contracts, pulls the hair upright, and as the hair is pulled upright, a layer of skin around that hair basically traps some warm air near the surface of the skin. And this is called goosebump formation, otherwise referred to as piloerection. We know the structure of the skin. Let's go through all of the functions. Well, the skin is a physical barrier, so that's a protective function. It's protecting against the entry of pathogens. We also know that it has a protective function in that melanin is produced and melanin is the natural sunscreen protecting the lower layers of the skin from harmful UV radiation. The skin is an enormous sense organ. It's sensing pressure, pain, touch and temperature. It's involved in thermoregulation, so that's part of homeostasis maintaining constant internal conditions. It's also important as an energy store, so we know that excess energy is stored as fat in that adipose tissue. So that covers the skin in perhaps a little bit more detail than you need to know, but I think it helps with understanding. So make sure you know the diagram of the skin and the functions of the skin, particularly what happens in thermoregulation. If you want to learn more in anatomy, I highly recommend Dr. John Campbell's YouTube channel. He is an incredible teacher.